When archaeologists started digging in a city parking lot, they warned success was unlikely. But after finding a skeleton that could be Richard III, the improbable began to sound plausible. Today it became a remarkable reality, a 500-year-old royal mystery finally solved. Beyond reasonable doubt, the individual exhumed at Greyfriars in September 2012 is indeed Richard III, the last Plantagenet King of England. I need to get a sample of your DNA. DNA provided by Canadian Michael Ibsen proved key in identifying a long lost piece of English history. A 17th generation descendant of Richard III's sister, his sample provided a crucial match. You didn't expect the match to be that perfect? Uh, to be honest, I didn't. It, it was a complete shock. I, I didn't think there was any possibility with that length of time. And it was a Canadian geneticist who managed to extract DNA from the 500-year-old skeleton to confirm the link. I went very quiet, actually. It's one of those things where you just think, oh my goodness. My kingdom for a horse! One of history's great villains portrayed notably by Shakespeare as a hunchback and a tyrant. His remains do reveal secrets. His telltale curved spine caused by scoliosis his scarred skeleton testament to a brutal death at the Battle of Bosworth in 1485. And now, just across the street from the car park where he was found, the plan is to rebury Richard III's remains in a place far more suitable for a king. And along with proper burial at the city's cathedral, there's hope renewed interest in his life may challenge long-held views about one of England's most maligned monarchs. Ben O'Hara, Burns, CTV News, Leicester. Today's press conference has been called a cerebral X factor, a fascination for anyone interested in history or science. Dan Riskin from Daily Planet is both and joins <laughs> us now. This is such a cool story, Dan. Everything about it is cool. And, uh, you know, nobody was really going to believe that this was Richard III unless they got the DNA evidence. And to do that, they needed to find somebody alive today who had DNA that they could exactly match with Richard III. And, you know, most DNA mixes up when a man and a woman make a baby. It gets mixed up. But mitochondrial DNA is passed through the mother. So they didn't just have to find a descendant of Richard III, they needed to find someone whose mother's 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 mother, straight up through women only, would go right up to Richard's sister. And if they could do that and find a match, they'd have it. And that's exactly what they found. And that match was a Canadian, Michael Ibsen. But it's 500 years old. How do you get DNA after all these centuries? Very carefully. This, there wasn't even a coffin. So they weren't sure that they were going to be able to get any DNA out of this thing. And, uh, you know, we went, we saw what they were doing taking teeth out of the skull, drilling in behind them, powdering up the bone, and then centrifuging to get to the DNA. Um, and, of course, the biggest risk is that you accidentally contaminate the skeleton with one of the researchers' DNA. So they had to be very careful, but it looks like they got it. Unbelievable. None of it would be happening were it not for Shakespeare. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Really interesting. Uh, of course, you can catch Dan and Zaya on Daily Planet every night at 7 o'clock on Discovery. After the break, putting the stopper on the copper.